Hello, wonderful viewers around the world. Welcome to my channel. This is the Sikahima channel. This is the channel we talk about life, we talk about health, parenting, finance, and many more. Please kindly subscribe, like it, share, and comment, and give me times up so that the channel will grow. My name is Dori Sikahima. I'm a midwife and a registered nurse and a clinician. And once again, thank you for being with me. Today, we're going to talk about uterine fibers. Fibroid. And the main reason why I'm talking about uterine fibroid is because I have encountered so many women with uterine fibroid and I find it very beneficial to share the knowledge I have about uterine fibroid. So kindly stay with me as we get into this business. Thank you. So what is a uterine fibroid? A uterine fibroid is any mass or tumor that grows in a woman's womb or uterus. It is non-cancerous. It is just a fibrotic tissue or muscles and filled with blood that sits in the woman's uh, uterus or in the womb. We cannot talk about uterus or, uh, or talk about the uterus or uterine fibroid without talking about the layers of the uterus. So there are three layers of the uterus. We have the perimetrum, which is the outer layer. We have the myometrum, which is the middle layer, that is the muscle layer. And we have the endometrium, which is the inner layer, that is the smooth layer that lines the inner cavity of the uterus. And there are different kinds of fibroids. Wherever the fibroid develops, it can be in the outer layer, it can be in the muscle layer, and it can be in the inner layer or in the inner cavity where the baby normally is housed so why again we talking about fibroids because many women around the world about 70 to 80 percent develop fibroids it is irrespective of persons but there are a whole lot of people black women that are prone to developing fibroids and we black women are at risk of developing these fibroids that's why i decided to enlighten people about fibroids so we have uh it because i don't know something in our gene that makes us develop fibroid and also yes. some of we turn into menarche very early Menarche is the first menstruation of a young girl so when you turn to menstruate early it also puts you at risk of developing a fibroid and we have some nutritional deficiencies factors now let's come to the causes the actual cause of a fibroid is unknown but they said they are contributing factors that can cause the development of a fibroid single and it can be multiple that means it can be many it can develop in different areas and different layers of the uterus so let's talk about some of the uh, contributing factors. One of them is hormones. We have the estrogen and progesterone being the female hormone that controls our menstrual cycle. And during the menstruation period, you have a hormone that is in charge. And when you are getting ready or every woman after menstruation, then the uterus is also prepared again to receive a fertilized ovum. That means it's prepared for fertilization to take place and embedment that is pregnancy. So when there's a fertilized egg that travels into the uterus to uh, into the uterine lining, there's a preparation, a whole preparation that goes on. And during that stage there, the progesterone and estrogen interchange that can also cause the development of a fibroid because fibroids can develop at any, any given time during the childbearing age of a woman. That means that you have active progesterone and active estrogen doing its work as expected and it can cause uterine fibroid development. We can also get fibro because of pregnancy, because when you get pregnant, the uterus becomes very active and it is open to receive more blood supply. And this blood and nutrients goes into the uterus to make it more uh, active so that the fibroid 
becomes engulfed. It is fed. It is truss receives a lot of large supply. It makes it uh, the fibroid develops. It makes it grow because it's getting nourishment, and it makes the fibroid grows bigger. So that when uh, there's a fibroid that is minute or very tiny, it becomes more bigger because there's a lot of blood supply and nutrients to the uh, to that particular area or the whole uterus so the fibroid is also fed and it grows just like the baby is growing so there is a sharing of nutrition blood oxygen and all the requirements that the baby needs the same requirement is being shared between the fibroid and the baby and the other part is when you have a history, a family history that let's say your grandmother had a fibroid, your mom had a fibroid or your sister has fibroid, then the tendency of you developing fibroid is very high. And we have to pay attention to these factors, changes that goes on. And according to research, the tissues or the cells of fibroid are different from the actual uterine cells. So there is a mutation that has taken place, but the good thing is normally it's not cancerous. So it takes place like that. And we have the extracellular mattress, which is a, a sticky substance that sticks cells together and it becomes like mortar. It attracts cells and attracts uh, uh, fluids and all that. That makes it uh, also become fibroid in the uterus. That is most, most of them, I mean, you may not even detect it. You may not know the cause of it by the time you realize you have a fibroid. How do you diagnose a fibroid? A fibroid can be diagnosed by ultrasound, MRI, or CT scan. They can do so many things to detect that somebody has a fibroid. The signs and symptoms of fibroid, one of them is irregular menstrual bleeding, always bleeding. Some may last for seven days, two weeks, and there's this consistent amount of heavy bleeding at all times. There is also the thing called spotting. So you have a menstruation today, regular menstruation, and then in between two menstruation, you see spotting like small, small drops of blood in your underwear or in your pad. That is called spotting. There is also a pressure in your lower abdomen or even in the uterus if it's bigger. And you feel this pressure in the perineum or on the pelvic floor muscles. You can also have difficulty emptying your bladder because the, the, the fibroid is obstructing the bladder or it's obstructing the urinary tract. Therefore, there is pressure on the bladder making it difficult for it to be emptied completely and you can also have agency you feel like you want to go to the washroom all the time to void but then when you go this little drop of urine it could be due to a fibroid and there is also pain lower abdominal pain or cramping the cramping might not be it can be as mild that it, that can be ignored till it becomes so severe that you cannot ignore it. And we also have um, back pain because the weight of the mass or the fibroid is present on a nerve and then you feel it at your back or you, there's some, because there's a weight in your abdomen, it is affecting your, your vertebrae at your back. That can be also be a sign that causes that lower uh, 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 abdominal pain as a result of this complication of uh, fibroid. Some women also have constipation because the pressure of the fibroid or the weight of the fibroid is present on the colon, that is your large intestine, and it is preventing the feces or the stool to come out. Some of them to you may not experience anything. You may not have any symptom at all but you have a fibroid. Complication a fibroid brain is one. You can have anemia because you tend to bleed a lot and you lose blood. It means that you become anemic. You can become uh, anemic to a point that the blood volume reduces and it's called hypovolemic shock because you lose a lot of blood. You can go into shock 
or you can become unconscious when you're walking or something, you can fall down because of the low volume of blood. And it's a medical emergency. They have to rush you to a hospital and you need your blood replaced. So that is called transfusion. They have to give you blood. And then the other hand, some people, because of this um, fibroid setting in the uterus, it becomes difficult for them to be pregnant because of this competition that goes on. So it is itself not the cause of the infertility. You get pregnant, but then it will cause you to have abortions. So you will tend to have repeated abortions because of the space. If it is big, then the, when there's a fertilization takes place, there's no place for the baby to attach itself to. Therefore, it comes out as abortion. It comes out as miscarriage. And that is also a contributing factor to infertility infertility and then we have the light for date sometimes the baby develops but then the baby becomes too tiny when the baby is born because the baby shares the nutrients and the oxygen and the blood supply with the fibroid so instead of the baby developing at a specific rate the baby is developing very tiny and sometimes these babies are born premature because the abdomen tends to become bigger as if they are multiple pregnancies, but it's just one baby. But because the space and the, uh, the space is being shared, then the fibroid occupying the space makes the baby comes out early because the abdomen is overstretched or the uterus is overstretched as if it is ready to deliver a baby. Meanwhile, the baby is not due, but because the space is being competed for with the fibroid. There's also light for date because the baby is too tiny. Then the baby is born very tiny even though the baby is matured it comes out at 36 weeks or uh, and above but then it becomes so tiny and it's called light for date or light for gestational age that the baby is born very tiny even though it is the time for the baby to be born we also have pregnancy malformations like congenital deformities because of this space let's say a big fibroid is resting on the arm or the head of your baby the baby might be born with some abnormality and this are some of the causes or some of the complications that a fibroid can cause and it can also result into uh, the baby becoming uh, malnourished so the baby will come even though it's tiny but then there's some nutrients or the qualities that the baby does not have so how do we treat fibroids? We treat fibroids by, sometimes if it's too big, it has to be removed. There are so many ways to get rid of a fibroid through myomectomy, opening up the uterus and taking it out, or sometimes they inject some medications in and get it shrinked out, or sometimes they do. So if you know you have a fibroid or you have this problem, just go see your doctor. Let your doctor do an ultrasound or a complete gynecological checkup for you. And you will know that uh, she will just let you know if you have a fibroid and how big it is and the complications it's causing in the treatment so that you, during the childbearing age, you can also have a child or you can also have a, a, a life without thinking about you becoming anemic at any time. So this is all I bring your ways around the world once again. My name is Doris. Please kindly subscribe, like it, share, and comment. God bless you for being with me. Stay focused, stay safe, and remember God loves you in the pandemic.